Looks like the tensions in the Middle East have subsided slightly, and now we've got a recovery in the price of Bitcoins, and we've got a hell of a recovery in the price of vaults. In fact, when I look at this, it feels like for the first time in Middle this East bull market, subsided slightly, Ooh, and now we've got a recovery the echo, in yeah. the price of Bitcoins, and we've got a. So it feels that to me like for the first time in this cycle, we've actually had a full reset. And if you look at in funding, showing you that yes, we probably have had a full, full, full reset, and we're ready for a bull market. And now what you're getting is you're getting a lot of people that saying, what you need to do is you need to buy the coins or you need to look at the coins that recover the quickest because those are the ones that are showing relative strength. But let me tell you, buying now is, you, you need to start buying. But if you buy the wrong altcoins, you're going to fall into a trap. You cannot just look at the coins that have just recovered and say, because they recovered the fastest, they're showing relative strength. I'm going to show you today exactly why that is. I'm going to show you today whether or not you should start buying immediately and the coins that you actually should start buying. So, Got a man here. I am in Dubai bringing you crypto love and crypto wisdom. Let's go, guys. We're coming to you from Dubai. We've got all hands on deck. We've got our man Fred driving in the back here, as you can see. He hasn't driven a, a show in a long time, but because we're all traveling in Dubai, uh, because we're all traveling in Dubai, we now have Freddie on the on the controls here, uh, back back on the deck here. So listen, guys. Uh, first of all, got a lot to talk about today. We're going to talk about this altcoin recovery and talk about where you should be buying altcoins. Is this the right time to be buying altcoins, or is this a trap? Because instinctively. What we're saying is that the tensions in the Middle East have completely subsided and that this dip is over, the flush is over, and the leverage is over. But you've got to be careful because if you just sheepishly buy into altcoins, and specifically if you buy into the altcoins that are recovering, you might fall into a classic, classic, classic trap. And I see a lot of people falling into that trap. So today, we're going to keep you out of that trap. I do think it's time to start buying immediately but I'm going to show you exactly which tokens we should be buying. It's not every token out there, and it's certainly not the ones that people are yelling you for you to buy. So listen, if you're new to the channel, this is where we bring you the highest alpha per minute shows, and we try and bring it to you every single day. I mean, I've been here multiple times this weekend while I've been traveling, bringing you crypto love and bringing you crypto wisdom because I knew that we needed it. Because when markets collapse, um, that's what we do. So what you need to do, subscribe to the channel. You are today and you appreciate the fact that we are bringing you this live coverage while we're away smash the like button obliterate the like button let's see if we can get to 5,000 likes today i see already there's 6,000 people here it's going to be a massive 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 show so let's get the show on the road you're going to smash the like button i'm going to bring you there's a ton of alpha today there's a ton of alpha here today um lots and lots to go let's look at exactly where we are in the cycle so very interestingly very interestingly Bitcoin is very, very, very much at a very crucial level right now because we broke down from this ascending triangle or from this bullish flag. We broke down below it. And now we're fighting to get back into it. And it could be that we'll very, very, very soon with Bitcoin either break in and confirm that the structure is back on track or we will break down and then we are back in trouble. So we're right now fighting a very, very, very crucial point in Bitcoin. You need to look at the close of today and you need to see that we close inside this wedge over here. And it looks like we are going to close inside the wedge. When it comes to altcoins, even though the altcoins are actually green, as you can see, the altcoins are very, very, very green today. Don't be fooled because when you look at total three, total three actually put in a lower low. That was the first low. That was the second low. And you can even say that this low was lower than this low over here. Bitcoin didn't put in that lower low. So you can see Bitcoin was like saved. You see, it, it didn't go below the 60,799 60, level. But altcoins and total three actually did do that. And the reason why that happened, we actually covered on a video, which we, we made this week, to you, that this war, this escalation, this is not the reason for the altcoin collapse. The reason for the altcoin collapse is actually, it's much, much, much deeper. And we covered it in a video that we did on the weekend. It's this video over here, which is called altcoin crash, negative 50%. Um, that, is, that covered all the reasons why altcoins were collapsing. And let me tell you that, the, that altcoins were not collapsing because of this war. 
Altcoins were collapsing because of, because of a fundamental change in the market structure. Altcoins were collapsing because we're drowning in tokenomics, and we'll talk about that a bit later in the show because those are some of the tokens that for sure can be buying. What happened with Bitcoin was very different. So Bitcoin was in a tug of war because when Middle Eastern uh, 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 war, when the war started to escalate, when the tensions in the Middle East started to escalate, and you saw gold going up, and you saw the Dixie going up. I mean, look at the Dixie. The Dixie is at 106. Those are levels that we haven't seen since no, 2023. When the world was worried about the Middle East, Bitcoin was actually caught, into, caught in a tug of war. On the one hand, there were the people that don't know Bitcoin very well, and they treated it like a risk asset. And they started dumping their Bitcoin. On the other hand, there were people that were saying, hey, Bitcoin should be treated like gold in this situation because Bitcoin is digital gold. And so you had this tug of war in Bitcoin and that tug of war is actually still being played out right now. You have the bulls who understand that you need to be buying Bitcoin because of the war and that is pulling you up into the, the triangle. And then you have the bears that don't really understand Bitcoin trying to pull you down. Right now, you can see that gold is very, very, very close to its all-time high. I mean, it did spike to 2,431 on the weekend, or, or I think it was Friday. Well, which day was that? That was Friday when the, 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 the Middle East escalated. But now it's trading at 2,352. So you can see that gold was treated uh, completely different. So let's quickly look at where we're at when it comes to the war. There's a lot of confusion. What the market is telling you, and that's what I always like to look at because the market seems to be the smartest, is right now the, the, the US markets are about one point up. And that's telling you that people aren't that worried about an escalation in the Middle East. People just aren't that worried about an escalation in the Middle East. We did have some tensions. I mean, Walter Bloomberg said Israel said to strike back. Then we said, you know, they're still on high alert, but no one actually wants to escalate the tensions even further. Um, Israel has made it clear to the U.S. that it's not looking for significant escalation with Iraq. Um, then you have the Israeli uh, uh, press, the, the, the army def, uh, press guy, and he says, Over the last two hours, we approved the provisional plans for both offensive and defensive action. We will continue to protect the state of, the state of Israel and we will continue the plans. So the last I'm two replay. hours, we approved the operational plans for both offensive and defensive action. We will continue to protect the state of the state of Israel and together with our partners. We will continue to build a more secure and stable future for the entire Middle East. So I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of confusion. And I mean, I guess that's that's pretty normal, right? Why is that pretty normal? Because if you were about to invade Iran, if you were Israel and you were about to invade Iran, you're not going to go on the news and say, Iran, we're coming to invade you. Ready? We are going to that coordinate over there. You're going to keep them guessing. You know, you're going to say, look, we've approved defensive and defensive. And then you're going to keep them waiting. You're going to keep them waiting before you attack. But what the market's telling you right now, the market's telling you right now that they're not really worried about a Middle East uh, escalation. Um, you can see, though, that the traders are actually getting quite prepared. So you can see that the Dixie, people are moving into safe havens. And, you know, in a time of war, what's a safe haven? Well, the safe haven is the U.S. dollar and Gold is a, is a good place to be. And of course, Bitcoin. And that's why people are now pushing to get Bitcoin into that uh, uh, trial over there. The main thing is, though, that if a war does break out, I mean, let's just understand. Like, tomorrow, a war breaks out, uh, just like a war broke out between Russia and Ukraine, just like you know, many other wars have broken out since the time of Bitcoin. Where would you rather be? Honestly, like, where would, if, the, if a war broke out today, where would you rather be? Would you rather in, in Bitcoin and ETH, or would you rather be in the bank? And I, I, I love this tweet from Overdose. He says, so you panic sell your ETH and Bitcoin because you're afraid of World War III. Do you really think that your bank will save you? Study World War I and World, and World War II. You don't even have to study World War I and World War II. You, you just need to study what's happened in, in, in recent history. And if you look in recent history, what we realize is that actually wars are good. For markets, I mean, they're not good for people. They're tragic for people, obviously. But when you look at the data, the data says to you that when wars break out, when, when invasions happen, the best strategy is actually to buy the invasion. Because what happens at the invasion is that you get peak fear. 
because people panic. And then people actually go and rationalize and look at data and say, hold on a second, buying the invasion is actually probably one of the best trading strategies in the world. So if you look at the Iraq war or you look at the Crimean crisis, or if you look at the Gulf war, and even if you looked at the, the Russia-Ukraine uh, uh, attack, um, Russia invaded Ukraine here, there was a little bit of a dip and then bang, we all we went straight back up here, right? And that's exactly what usually happened. And it's not actually only wars, it's usually any panic event, the best time to buy is when the panic event hits. So the best time to buy when COVID hit, I mean, you'll remember the COVID correction, I don't have to remind you, but for those of you who maybe got a little bit of amnesia, let's we could just go into the weekly chart, uh, I think it was 20, there we go. When was the best time to buy? The best time to buy was when COVID hit. When you look at the, the Iran invasion, the, the uh, Ukrainian invasion, the best time to buy was when this actually happened. Um, you can see here, that, uh, you know, like the last time that we had a, a, a banking collapse, the best time to buy was when bank actually collapsed. Uh, the bank actually collapsed, when SVB bank actually collapsed. So what you're looking to do is you're looking to buy attacks. You're looking to buy invasions. And I'm not talking about specifically war invasions, but that is usually the most bullish time to buy. Now, will the war escalate? I don't know. I mean, if you want my opinion, I think that I don't think that Israel will just take this thing lying down. And I think that there's going to be some kind of escalation. But guys, we've been living in a war for years now. I mean, we've been living in the Russia-Ukraine war, which is actually a proxy war between the US and Russia. And they're just using Ukraine to fight it. We've been in that war for a long time. This is probably a proxy war between Russia and Iran. And again, I think they're probably using Israel to fight it. The, the, the thing about wars is that generally when the invasion happens, that's the best time to start buying because people are panicking. And if you look at where we're at, pretty simply, what you can see is you, you can see that. So Chris Bernisky says, if the Israel-Iran situation is good, crypto's leverage reset and weak hand flush is a nice setup going into the halving. And that's exactly what we got. For the first time since the beginning of this bull market, we got a full deleveraging of the crypto markets. I've always said to you guys that I'm, I'm too worried about this bull market. We haven't had a deleveraging event. We haven't had an event where people are scared. We haven't had an event where people change their behaviors. This is the first time that we're actually getting an event where people are actually changing their behaviors. It's, it's actually not, uh, 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 they, they actually got completely leveraged out of the system. So you had $700 million liquidated on Friday, $700 million li liquidated on Saturday. You've had another $300 million leverage in the last 24 hours. That is a huge deleveraging. Look at funding rates. I mean, when was the last time you saw blue? Just for those of you who don't remember what blue is, blue means that funding rates are negative. When was the last time that you saw negative funding rates? So we've had a, a total leverage reset. Just, just look, i try and make this a bit bigger for you guys, but just look at how the leverage went from 23 billion all the way back down to 10 billion. We reduced leverage by over 50%. This is the best thing that I've ever seen. I know that some of you guys got liquidated, um, but from a market structure point of view, and I'm sorry if you got liquidated, I also got liquidated on one or two positions. I know Sheldon did too. Um, from a market structure point of view, James Van Straten says it right. He says, time to buy. <laughs> Rates are negative. It's time to start buying. <clears throat> what GCR says, he says, if you've been sidelined, believe this is a good opportunity to scale into high conviction tokens. If you fully invested, just survive and hold on to your spot positions and do not capitulate. Someone once said liquidations are a forced transfer of wealth from traders who need leverage to wealthy spot buyers. I was enjoying retirement from social media, but don't want to see my brothers get shaken out. And what he's saying is, just make sure you survive this dip. And if you survive this dip, and if you can buy more, like, like uh, No Face says, I bought tokens like there's no tomorrow on Saturday night, you'll actually make life-changing money because everything is out the way now. The leverage is gone. The CME gaps are closed. The RSIs, okay, now the RSIs is the, the sentiment indicator, the momentum indicator. Look at the RSIs. The RSIs are at the lowest levels they've been since January. We had, we, had, we had RSIs at these levels. And before that, I mean, 20th of, of August, 2023, that's how low the RSIs are. Um, so Cold Blooded Chiller says, the four-hour RSIs had been at this level, or at this level, 
uh, eight times in the past seven months on Bitcoin. Seven of those eight times it marked the bottom. Five of those eight times it bounced at this exact level. So we are in a complete reset. Look at the RSIs on total three. The RSIs on total three of, I mean, any lower than that, it's going to get through the bottom of the of the chart. I mean, it's going to take us literally to the bottom of the chart. Also, the realized profit and loss ratio. Now, what is the realized profit and loss ratio? For those people who don't know, the realized profit and loss ratio is the average price of Bitcoin that everybody is holding. And that, or not everybody's holding, it's, it's now negative, which means that people are in losses. The only thing that's not resetting, and I think this meter is broken. I think someone needs to phone the people that do this and tell them, your meter is not working. This meter is a, is a pile of shit. It's not working. Th this meter is not working. The fear and greed is cannot be at 74. I saw people extremely, extremely, extremely scared this weekend. You cannot tell me that uh, that the the um, the meter here is at 74. So this is the only thing in my mind where I can't reconcile that it's actually um, that it's actually uh, um, a reset. Um, so the other thing that actually went completely, completely over our heads here, completely over our heads here, was people also forgot that Friday was actually tax day in the United States. Now, what's tax day? Tax day is where you have to pay your taxes. So you remember that a lot of people made money in crypto last year, and they have until the 15th of April to actually pay their taxes, and today is the 15th of April. So they would have had to sell assets in order to get cash to pay their, their, um, their, their uh, what's it called, to pay their taxes. And we know that tax day is actually a, quite a, a negative event because they don't have money to, to, to pay the taxes, so they have to go and sell some crypto and sell some other assets. And as you can see, every time, every, every year, there's in tax day, we get a, a big, a, a big sell-off event. It happens every single time. I mean, this is quite cute. It says, always nice to see billions of American tax dollars. Uh, sorry, always nice to see billions of dollars of American-made military weapons used 48 hours before tax day. It makes you feel good to see exactly where your money's been going. I heard that the Israeli defense against Iran actually cost the U.S. a billion dollars. So get that, the U.S. spent a billion dollars on one night of protecting Israel against Iran, one billion dollars. I'm not sure if that's right, but uh, uh, I mean, it does. It, it, it is, it is um, something to think about. And it's not only on crypto, there's, there's tax day seasonality uh, in everything. But the reality is where we are now, we are now at a full reset. Funding is reset. Leverage is reset. People have been leveraged li or liquidated out of the market. And the reality is that we've got a very, very, very unique buying opportunity, a buying opportunity that I haven't seen for a long, long, long time. We've got a, a super, super, super unique buying opportunity that we need to look at. The first thing that we need to look at is that the charts have come down to levels where if I would have said to you a couple of weeks ago that we're coming down to these levels on the charts and on the bubbles, if I said to you, listen, um, we're going to be at a place where injective protocol is going to be in the 20s. It's going to be at 20. I don't know what, what it is now. Let's we can just have a look here. This was a, a token that was at $40. It's now $26.48. If I was to say a couple of weeks ago, listen, you'll be able to pick up our weave uh, at in in the $20 or $20, $28, you would have laughed at me. You would have said there's no chance that this is happening. But this is where we are. This is where the charts are. We're at a chart that, at, that we are at levels that you couldn't even dream about a couple of weeks ago. And now it's here and it's, it's, it's ready for you guys to start buying. And it's time to start buying. And as Crypto Jelly says, says you get through the first major altcoin correction of the bull market. The last cycle saw three of them. And in the cycle before that, many more will take some time to recover, but it looks really good for new highs in the coming months. So, this was a healthy correction in a bull market. In fact, this was the healthiest correction that we can get into a bull market. And the truth is that it's time to start buying. It's time to start buying. Because what you're seeing now is you're seeing the part of the cycle where the Bitcoin dominance peaks. And we have this every cycle. Every cycle. So I know this because I've been here in multiple cycles, but I want to show you something. So what you have is you have the price of Bitcoin going up. Let's actually see if we can get two charts here and, and see if we can look at it on two charts. So uh, on this chart, I'm going to put the BTC USD. And on the bottom chart, I'm going to put the dominance. And let's see if we can actually even get a third. Chart. 
let's see if we can get, get a third chart. I think that's the third chart. And in this chart over here, what I'm going to put is I'm going to put total three. And what you'll see is that in every cycle, you get to a position. Oh, okay. If I start moving around, it gets crazy. But you get to a position where the Bitcoin dominance peaks. And when the Bitcoin dominance peaks, that's when altcoins go on their big run and actually hit the top. And you can see that you can see that over here. And it happens in, in, in every single cycle. And so this is where we are at the moment. So you've got Ben Cowan, who's you know obviously calling for the peak of of um, the peak of uh, Bitcoin dominance, but at the same time, at the same time, you've got um, you've got and, and, and I mean I, I want you to see this. So you've got the Bitcoin maxis, and they're celebrating. They're saying the 2024 stats for the top 50 coins are kind of crazy. Only six are outperforming Bitcoin. 40% are now negative in 2024. No L1s or DeFi beating Bitcoin. Okay, genius. But if you take this on the day of a correction, when the altcoins are down 50%, obviously you're going to get that. I didn't see any of the maxis doing these calculations when we were at all-time highs. I didn't see any of that. All I saw, well, all I see them doing is at the peak of a correction. I mean, this was posted on yesterday when we were in the peak of an altcoin correction. That is when these guys start posting this, this kind of thing. So now we're in a position where it's time to start buying. So uh, Capital says, says, new weekly close and altcoin market cap has successfully protected the 250 uh, le billion level. Positive news to stop the market wide drop in altcoin valuations. Prepare for an increase to revisit the 315 resistance level. And you can see that you know the bubbles are completely green. A lot of the, the big bubbles are, a lot of the green bubbles are very big. Uh, and people are saying what you should be doing right now is you should study the coins that reverse the fastest because the coins that reverse the fastest are the ones that will outperform. But these people are wrong. They're missing out on an important issue. Elio is right. He says, study strength during times of weakness. But strength is not the tokens that reverse the fastest. You can't just look at the bubbles and say, okay, well, listen, renders up 21%. Our weaves up 12%. That is the one that I should be buying. Because if you do it, you will get wrecked. And, but a lot of people are saying it. They're saying, study the coins that reverse the fastest. Those are the ones that outperform in the foreseeable future. There are a few coins in the top 100 that were able to retrace most of the dump already. That's a mistake. A lot of people are pointing to this. People are, and, and you can see it here. Jacob Canfield says, trading journal uh, entry. Next time we're on the brink of World War III, buy meme coins, in the, buy meme coins on the dip. That's true but not because they recovered the most. And the reason why I say not because they recovered the most is because if you look at this chart, it tells you everything. You can see that Joe Bowden fell from a high of about 110 all the way down to 33 cents. So the fact that it had a green candle doesn't mean that you should be buying it now. The way you should be looking at your altcoin bags now is you should be looking at your altcoin bags and you should be saying, look, we have to start buying immediately. But the strategy that we deploy is we're going to not buy everything today and not try to buy this green pump that's happening and FOMO in because there'll never be another buying opportunity. Because to be honest, I don't think the shit's over. I think that there's still going to be a lot of tensions and the market's still going to jump around you. I don't think we just bounce into all-time highs immediately. I don't think that's going to happen. Although a lot of people on Twitter want you to think that that's what's going to happen. I don't think that's what's going to happen here. I think that we're going to chop around here. I think today we've got a lot of short squeezes. A lot of the markets recovering very quickly because of shorts. That's going to cause a whole lot of FOMO. That's going to cause a whole lot of FOMO. And these numbers may continue to go up. What I would be doing right now is I would be dollar cost averaging into coins that actually show strength. But I would keep in mind what we said on the weekend. On the weekend, we did a show. And we spoke about tokenomics and we spoke about the dangers of bad tokenomics. And I want to just show you the dangers of bad tokenomics. And I want to show you an example over here. This is dimension. We love the technology, by the way. But look at how many tokens are on the market. It's that many tokens. And all of a sudden, the number of tokens is going to increase and increase. So what does that mean? <clears throat> Think about this. Think of tokenomics like alcohol at a party. Okay, let's just look, let's talk about something we actually relate to. 
think of tokenomics as alcohol at a party. And think of the party goers as retail investors. When the market is going up, when there's a lot of people at the party, when there's a lot of retail investors, the tokenomics, which is the alcohol, right? Like, look, 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 they're pouring alcohol. It's not alcohol, it's water, but they're pouring alcohol into people's mouths, right? They're pouring alcohol into people's mouths. And all this amount of alcohol has got somewhere to go, right? But the problem is that the more tokens you launch with bad tokenomics, imagine that each token that we launch with bad tokenomics is actually another bottle of tequila at the party. So imagine every time we launch a new token, Saga, Dimension, Celestia, all these tokens, that's more bottles of tequila. Now, the problem is that retail investors are disappearing because they're getting liquidated because, because retail hasn't arrived at the party yet. And there's more and more and more bottles of tequila coming to the party and pouring them, which means that the people that are here and buying have to drink it up. And if they can't drink it up, if they can't absorb all the tokens that are actually being released, you know what happens? Exactly. The whole party ends. We all pass out. We all get liquidated. We all die. So what I said today was the problem with altcoins, it's not the war. It's not the war. The war, the war was just the, 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 the catalyst. That's not the problem. The problem is that there's too many projects. There are not enough. Let's put it this way. There was a study done. And it said that there are $250 million of new tokens being released every single day. On perspective of what that $250 million is. $250 million worth of tokens being released into the market every single day is more than the ETF inflows on most days. And that is just the number of tokens that the, that the old tokens in the markets are emitting every single day. Now, with the ETF, You've got BlackRock buying the ETF. But when it comes to altcoins, who, who's buying all these altcoins? Who's, who's drinking all the tequila out of the bottle? There's no one. That's the problem. You're starting to understand the problem now. The problem is that we are drowning in tokenomics. We are drowning in, this tequila, in these tequila bottles. Every time that a new token launches, I want you to think. New bottle of tequila at the party. Look around you. How many party goers are there at the party? If there aren't enough party goers to drink, all this tequila that's going to come out of the bottle, don't buy the token. Because that means that no matter how smart you are, I want, to, I want to give an example. Let's say that you bought Dimension today. Okay, you were a genius. Let's just quickly look at Dimension. And I'm using Dimension because, yeah, so let's look at, let, let's look at Dimension today. It has a market cap of $640 million. In other words, the number of tokens in circulation times the price is $640 million. The problem is that there's 3.9 billion worth of tokens that will be released, 3.3 billion dollars worth of tokens that will be released, 3.3 billion billion dollars worth of tequila that will be put at the party. Now, if you think that the adoption of the technology or the buying pressure on dimension is going to increase quicker than this, buy the token by all means. If not, even if it's the best piece of technology, it will just drown in the tokens. That's the problem. And so when you're looking at buy lists, and we're going to talk about buy lists now. I'll show you a few buy lists. In fact, let me just refresh that. I don't know why it's not here. We've made some buy lists for you guys. What I'll show you here uh, is we'll actually add the link to the token unlocks. But what you've got to be looking at, you've got to be looking at the buy lists in, in a different way. Now, what do I mean by that? You've got to look at two things now when you're looking at a buy list. Yes, I think the time to start buying is right now. I'm not going to give you, I'm going to can talk not right now about, about which tokens to buy. I'm not going to give you all, the, all the, um, the, the things that you need to buy. In fact, let me see if I can give you some more buy, buy lists over here. Let me just have a look. Uh, hold on a second. Where is it? Let me just see if I've got it here. Okay, no, it's not that one. Okay, so when you're looking at a buy list, what you're looking at, what you're going to be looking at when you're looking at a buy list, you've got to be looking right now at two things. Number one, don't follow the blind sheep that say those that reverse the fastest are the ones to be buying because that's wrong. What you want to be doing, you want to say, okay, let's look at how far it went down. Okay, so like, let's, take, let's take, I don't know, let's take Solana. Solana went down 42% in 
it recovered 32%, and the net position is that today it is um, it is 24% away from its peak. Okay, so what does that mean? So I just want to make sure that the formula here is correct. A J. Okay, hold on. Let me just. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to look at how far did they go down, and how much do they did they recover. Therefore, you want to see how much are they down from the top. That is what relative strength is. So relative strength is not how much did they recover. That's that's nonsense. What relative strength is, how far did they go down? How much did they recover? What's the net position right now? So for example, let's look at Rune. Okay, so let's let's actually go to a chart of Rune. Okay, so we're going to go to the chart of Rune over here. And let's say, let's look at the top of, of Rune uh, in the cycle. So it went from here, from 11.50. It went down about... 60%. Let's just see what the, what our, what our here. So Rune, let's just have a look here. So Rune went down 62.57%. But then what happened was Rune recovered. And it recovered from its bottom, from its peak, from here to where we are. Oh, quickly. From here to where we are right now, it recovered about 31%. So the net position on Rune, the net position on Rune is that Rune is still down 50%. Now, that is not showing strength, but what it is showing is it is showing, uh, uh, for me, a potential highly undervalued tokens. So what you're looking for is you're looking to say, okay, what are the tokens that are right down are good quality tokens, and are still really, really, really cheap. Here's an example for you. In my mind, Rune is one of them. Let's let's underline that one. Rune is fantastic. Why? It went down 50%. It it's still it went down 62%. It's still down 52%. And it's a very good recovery token. Now let's look at another token, which is actually showing a lot of relative strength. So look, let's look at Ondo. So we'll, we'll, we'll look at Ondo. So Ondo over here. O N D O. Uh, let's just try and find a good chart. Okay, so here's Ondo. Okay, now what you'll notice about Ondo is if you go from the top and you go to the bottom, it had a 46% drawdown. Let's just see if, if I'm more or less correct because these guys had a 47% drawdown, but it's already recovered to the point where it's only 6.67% down. The one is showing you which tokens have relative strength and are jumping in the cycle. And the other ones are showing you which ones are recovering the quickest. So one is which ones are recovering the quickest, and one is which ones are still very cheap. Now, based on that, that is how you've got to make your buy decisions. You've got to decide whether you want to buy the tokens that have recovered the quickest and are showing relative strength. And I did that this morning, to be honest. I bought, I want to show you why I bought Telegram. So ton. Okay, uh, you know I've had a position, a, a big position in Ton for for a long time, but look at Ton. Let's actually even go to a, let's go to a four hour chart. Just it makes it, it makes it a, a, a bit better. So you can see from the top to the bottom, Ton went down thirty percent. If I look at where Ton is today, here you can see that it's only down nine percent in total. In total, from its high, from the peak. Ton is down 9%. Okay, this is a token that's going to lead us into the next cycle. Ondo is a token that's going to lead us into the next cycle. The market is not allowing it to bounce. Someone says, let's do Celestia. So let's do Celestia. So I, I, I want to show you a framework that, that covers two things. The first thing is you're looking at right now, you're looking at how did the token perform from its peak? Okay, Celestia is a, is, is a disaster. I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't even want to do it because just look what a disaster's token is. Disaster. It went from $22 at its peak, okay? And it went all the way down to six, down 65%. And then on the way up, on the way up, it's gone up 30%. But in terms of actual, wh where are we? It is still down 52% from its high. So the first thing that you're looking before you actually make your buy list, you're looking to look for things that are resilient, 
and things that are quality and cheap. So quality and cheap, Rune. Quality and cheap, are we? Were you saying, I want are we? I want to buy it very, very, very cheap. Okay, I want are we? I want to buy are we very cheap. Oh, hold on a second. It's 41% down. That means I'm still getting a good bargain. Good one to be buying. I want Phantom. Phantom is still 40% down from its from its all-time high. Good bargain. That to me, great. Let, let's, let's look at buying it. But I also want to make you a little bit smarter than that. And how I want to make you a little bit smarter is I want to say to you, we're looking at two things now, or three things. You're looking for tokens that don't really get affected by dips as a good buy. You're looking for tokens that did get affected by dips and are still cheap, but are good technology. That is a good buy. But, 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 here's the trick. I want you to also start looking at the market cap to fully diluted valuation ratio. Market cap is the number of tokens in circulation and fully diluted valuation is the, if the amount of tokens, what will be the total valuation when all the tokens are released in the market? Now, let me show you the difference between a good token and a bad token. Let's look at Rune. 81% of all Rune tokens are in the market. Let's look at Phantom. 88% of all Phantom tokens are in the market. So when you are looking at this curve, you are somewhere here in this curve. That means that you're not going to get dumped on by, by, by VCs and token releases. But now let's, let's take another one. Let's, take a, let's look at, at Ondo. Ondo is a great one. So Ondo has a huge fully diluted valuation. I think it's got like a 9 million fully diluted valuation. Okay, let's look at their tokenomics. Okay, if you buy Ondo today, this is where we're at. This is where we're at, here. Now, it might be a great token, but you're gonna drown in all these token releases. Unless you think that the protocol and its adoption is gonna grow at this pace. Now, I wanna just show you what this pace actually means. It means that, there is, right now, there's 1.4 billion tokens in circulation. Next year, this time, there will be 3.5 billion. That is 150% increase in the number of tokens. Unless you think that there's going to be 150% increase in the traction of this protocol, regardless of how good you think this token is as a buy, if you touch it, before you break even, you need the price to go up hundred or the market cap to go up 150 percent that's like before you walk out the party you got to drink another one and a half bottles of tequila and then still be in the same condition you got to say you got to think to yourself are there going to be enough people at this party to drink another one and a half bottles of tequila and still the party is going to be cool a cool party i don't think so so in this spreadsheet i specifically didn't make you one buy list because i'm sure that you guys are all looking at all of these buy lists over here and what i'm going to ask the researchers to even put a link right here to the token unlock. So you can actually just click and see the token unlock. We'll do that before we release the spreadsheet. But what you gotta become experts in is you gotta say, okay, I'm about to buy a token. First of all, am I looking to buy it because of relative strength or because it's cheap? You, you, you adjust whether it's relative strength or whether it's cheap. Then, then what you do is you say, let me look at the market cap divided by the fully diluted valuation. If it is above 0.5 or 0.6, buy it, buy it because it's, and meme coins are all in, in, in all circulation. So here you look at, you know, you can see they went like, like um, uh, uh, Tramp went down 73%, but recovered 104%. Fast up, fast down, fast up, fast down. But if you're buying tokens with low, market cap to FDV ratios, market cap to fully diluted valuation ratios. If you're buying those tokens, regardless of what happens, you're going to get wrecked because you're just going to drown in tokens, okay? So just like have a look here. Like Celestia, we spoke about Celestia. Love the technology. Fucking love it. Do I think it's worth $10 billion? Maybe. Look at the, the ratio of tokens in the market, 17%. What's going to happen if I buy this token? As much as I, I really want to buy Celestia, I think it's like unbelievable tech. What's going to happen to me? I'm going to drown 
in a bottle of tequila. That's what's going to happen. I'm going to, uh, when they release, here, let me show you their tokenomics. Let's quickly go to Tia. Here we go. There it is. There is Celestia. Okay. And I'm going to, you know what's going to happen to me if I buy this token today? As much as, I love, as much as I love this token and I want this token in my portfolio, you know what's going to happen? When they bring out these bottles of tequila over here, okay? When they bring out these bottles of tequila, you know what's going to happen? No matter how much of a good deal I thought I was getting, <laughs> I can't drink that much tequila. I mean, I can drink. I can hold my own. People will tell you. People that have partied with me will tell you. People that are about to party with me in Dubai will tell you. But I can't drink that much. Uh -uh, uh -uh, no, 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 no. That's 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 like drinking a whole bottle on your own. I can't do that. I can't do it. Someone says near protocol. Let's look at near protocol. I wonder if any of I, I know one of our researchers is near. I wonder if he actually put on his buy list. Let's have a look here. Um, if not, I'll do, here we go. Near. So ninety percent circulating supply. Fucking fantastic tokenomics. Okay, fantastic tokenomics. Now, am I buying this for relative strength or weakness? It's still 35% down from its start. Still showing relative strength. So, friends, let's summarize this before we talk about more important things. Number one, this is the time to start buying. Are we going to start buying it all at once? No, 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 no. We're going to DCA over the next couple of days because today might be a trap. It might be a short squeeze. Then the prices may start come, may, may come down and we could get another level. We don't know this yet. What we're going to do now is we are going to DCA because the market is undergoing a correction. And we're going to start dollar cost averaging. I'm doing it over every single day for the next month. I'm going to just dollar cost average a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. What am I dollar cost averaging into? I'm looking for two types of tokens. Those that are unaffected by dips and are going up only regardless. And those that look cheap because they're quality and they're well below their all-time high of the cycle. When I buy a token, the only metric that I'm interested in is market cap over FDV. If the market cap over FDV is low, don't touch the token. No matter how good she looks, no, let me put it this, this way. No matter how good she looks, when the tequila wears off, when, when, when the tequila wears off you're going to feel like such an asshole for doing what you've just done. You shouldn't do it. Like, trust me, I've had, a few, a few, I've had a few of those nights. You shouldn't do it. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. It's just not worth it, okay? Look at the market cap to FDV, and we're going to post you the spreadsheet as soon as we've added in the tokenomics link. And most of your favorite tokens are going to be here. Most of your favorite tokens are going to be here. And if the market cap to FDV is low, don't touch the token. Just don't touch it. Just avoid it like the plague. Forget about it. Don't touch. Blech. Leave it alone. We're not doing that shit. All right, so you got it. That is our strategy. It's time to start buying. We're going to be buying every single day, but it's not every altcoin. And don't fall into this bullshit trap of look at tokens that, that, that jumped the, the fastest. No, 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 that's garbage. That's garbage. That's not going to happen. Anyway, I want to spend a few seconds talking about Hong Kong. In fact, before we talk about Hong Kong, can we talk about airdrops? You have until Thursday to farm the gummy airdrop, and then we're taking the snapshot. If you want to be considered, I'm going to tell you again how to be considered before we talk about the next batch of altcoins here. Number one. You can, in fact, let's quickly go here. Uh, hold on a second. Let's just look at, at, let's just get the, okay, there we go. So how do you get gummy? You go to the bottom of this video, right here. There. You go to the bottom of this video and oh, it's now not the bottom. It's now the side because YouTube changed their rules. So you go here. Um, yeah. And what you do is, you can either go to Banter Bubbles and use the Banter Bubbles app and get double points. Double points are implemented again from tomorrow. Or you can open an account at Blowfin. Blowfin is going to be the first exchange to list Gummy. You need to open your account. There is a link over here. There we go. You click that link and you open an account. You've got until Thursday. If you don't have, an, put your account, if, you, if your account doesn't have money on Thursday, you ain't going to get the airdrop. The next thing you can do is you can buy Tooker tokens. So you can buy Tooker tokens because of our partnership with Tooker. All Tooker people are going to get an airdrop of Gummy. Gummy is going to be launched on Saturday, next Saturday, which is 4.20. You've got until Thursday to farm, guys. That's until Thursday to farm. Um, so go and do it. Go and do it today. Don't delay anymore. 
Um, if you open an account on Blowfin, everyone gets the same amount. So whether you open it when you open it last week or this week, you're still getting the same amount. Also, if you are looking for other opportunities, um, don't know if you guys have checked out a platform called Chappies. So Chappies is like a place where you go and you can find places that get you to like join communities, talk about uh, 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 um, uh, tokens. And you can actually, let me just see if I can get us into Chappies. Let's just get into the, the actual website so you can see it. And you can join a whole lot of communities and do a whole lot of things and start earning. So like, let's go to chat and earn. So for example, you go here and you can explore a whole lot of communities that have chat and earn um, uh, uh, things that you can do. So you can earn cookies in Telegram to participate. You can go to the Trex20 Telegram and, and go and talk there. And you can actually earn points and tokens. So go and check out Chappies. They are one of our sponsors. Um, and this is a great place if you want to go and get airdrops and points and you're looking for communities, you get rewarded for actually just chatting here, which is, which is actually quite big. Um, one more thing that I want to talk about, um, one more sponsor. So we are investigating market makers for Gummy, and it looks like for Gummy, I think DWF's going to market maker, and we may get a couple of other market makers as well. And I mean, I just got into the world of market making, and, and one of our sponsors actually does... Um, uh, you can call it like AI automated market making services. So it is a uh, project called Volument. Um, what they do is they democratize liquidity provision in the crypto market, and they offer a subscription-based model for users to participate in market making activities. And it's all driven by AI. So what you may want to do is just go and have a look at it. There's a link below. It's called Volument.io. Um, let me see what, what it says here in terms of it says fifth, we offer 50,000 uh, yeah, so it's, it's a, a market AI generated automated market making, which is amazing. All right, before we go, lastly, I want to talk about one more thing, which is I want to talk about Hong Kong. So Hong Kong, unlike the US and their bureaucracy and their SEC and all their other nonsense, okay, they just approved the ETFs. So there was a Bitcoin ETF and I think actually ETH ETFs were actually both approved. So uh, let's just quickly read what it said here. Interesting dynamic, um, uh, Bitcoin, Hong Kong just approved Bitcoin spot ETFs. No SEC nonsense, no, none of that crap. They just went and did it and got the show on the road and they didn't waste time like the Americans waste time and, and negotiate and whatever else. And that's why these guys are being unbelievable, un unbelievably. Now I want to just speak to Freddie because our friends at Tucker Carlson, Tucker Carlson Network, are supposed to make a great video today. Let's see if the video is out. Freddie, is the video out today? Negativa. Okay, it's not, not out yet. Look out for the video on the Tucker, Carl, Tucker Carlson um, uh, Twitter. And also, we're going to let you, we're going to uh, leave a link below to the Tucker Carlson uh, YouTube page. So go and subscribe to the YouTube page because Tucker is going to be bringing you a whole lot of alpha. Uh, I will also be bringing you a whole lot of alpha, but I'm going to be bringing it to you tomorrow. Until then, trade well, my friends.